Okay, so we are going to play a little bit of a game. So I'm going to read you a quote, and then I want you to guess who said it. Here's the quote. You can never be woke enough. That's the problem. It keeps going. It keeps going further and further and further down the line. And if you get to the point where you capitulate, where you agree to all these demands, it'll eventually get to straight white men who are not allowed to talk. So the question is, who is it that said this? Is it A, Bill O'Reilly, former Fox News host? B, Rush Limbaugh, dead radio show host? Or C, Joe Rogan, host of the Joe Rogan Experience on Spotify? I'll give you a few seconds to kind of think it over, guess who said it, and uh, here's the answer. You can never be woke enough. That's the problem. It keeps going. It keeps right. going further and further and further down the line. And if you get that to the point where you capitulate, where you agree to all these demands, it will eventually get to straight white men are not allowed to talk. Right. Because it's your privilege to express yourself when other people of color have been silenced throughout history. It, it will be, you're not allowed to go outside because so many people were imprisoned for so many years. I mean, I'm not joking. No, I, I know, I know. It really will get there. It's that crazy. You yeah. know, we just got to be nice to each other, man. And th there's a lot of people that are taking advantage of this weirdness in our culture, and then that becomes their thing. Their thing is calling people out for their privilege, calling people out for their position. You know, it's, uh, it's f***ing crazy times. I'm sure that the irony is completely lost on him, because as Right Wing Cope on Twitter points out, he's complaining about straight white men eventually not being able to talk, while he, as a straight white man, was paid $100 million from Spotify, literally, to talk. I mean, does he, does he even acknowledge how ridiculous he sounds? It's actually straight white men, like Joe Rogan, who are the real victims in American society. Definitely think that Joe Rogan's the victim. I'm sure that every day he cries himself to sleep in his mansion because of how much of a victim he is. And, you know, perhaps he, uh, you know, needs to get his mind off of his victimhood by playing some tennis on his uh, home tennis court or swimming in his uh, in-ground pool that I'm sure he has in his backyard. I mean, this is, this is clearly idiotic. And the reason why at the beginning of the video I, you know, made you guess between who actually said this is because Joe Rogan sounds a lot like a lot of right-wing ideologues who say the same thing, who propagate this claim that actually it's, it's white men who are the victims in America, not marginalized communities, not American workers. So Owen Higgins on Twitter shared two articles that sound eerily similar to what Joe Rogan is saying here. Bill O'Reilly complained that the left aka the woke mob, wants power taken away from the white establishment. And now dead radio show host Rush Limbaugh claimed that white privilege is a liberal construct. And now we have Joe Rogan, a supposedly apolitical self-identified idiot, saying the same thing, basically. Parroting the same points that right-wing ideologues have been making for decades. It's just a new package and a new person saying the same thing that we've been hearing. And honestly, I wasn't necessarily that taken aback by Joe Rogan saying this because I didn't necessarily think that he was being literal, right? And even his guest laughed because he didn't necessarily think that Joe Rogan was being serious as he complained about straight white men not being allowed to talk. But he, he confirmed he was serious. He said, uh, no, I'm not joking. It really will get there. So he confirmed that his argument was in fact literal. He believes... It is literally the case that we'll get to a point where straight white men won't be allowed to talk. You're supposed to cede all of your talking time to marginalized communities. He doesn't even persuasively argue against the straw man that he created. What marginalized communities want, the demands that they're asking for, and I don't know if he had a particular group in mind, he often shits on trans people, so maybe he was talking about them, but what people want isn't to replace white people at the top of the social hierarchy. What they're calling for is the abolition of the social hierarchy altogether so there can be equality. They don't want to make you their subordinates. They don't want to make you a second-class citizen. They just want equality. That's literally all that they want. By and large, civil rights movements are always criticized in this way. It's just that the argument 
changes a little bit. You use synonyms for words that they used before. I mean, do you think that in the civil rights era, conservatives back then or apolitical people were thinking, wow, the, these you know black Americans who are calling for an end to segregation, they seem perfectly reasonable. And you know, I don't think that this is going to make me a second class citizen. No, whites literally argued that if blacks got equal rights, that would be discrimination against them. We still see this argument trotted out against the LGBTQ community. Just a couple of weeks ago, I covered a segment from Mike Huckabee's program where he claimed that the Equality Act isn't actually about equality. Actually, it's about subjugating Christian Americans to second-class citizenship because if they're no longer allowed to discriminate against LGBTQ people, they are therefore being discriminated against. They're the new people who are the victims. And this is the same argument being made by somebody who's more persuasive than an idiot like Bill O'Reilly or Rush Limbaugh, who's dead, or Mike Huckabee. But here we are. Joe Rogan is continuing down this path of being just a full-blown conservative right-winger. It's pretty sad. But what's really sad is the fact that he has influence on a lot of people. I don't necessarily care about Joe Rogan's political ideology. He's a multi-multi-millionaire. If you have more than $100 million then I think you're going to be out of touch. That just comes with the money. But what's sad is that people still take Joe Rogan seriously. So people who are apolitical or don't necessarily know better, they might actually be persuaded by Joe Rogan's argument because he's the one making the argument. You know, when Rush Limbaugh or Bill O'Reilly makes this argument, people can easily deduce that these are right-wing talking heads. They're hacks. They're not objective. But when Joe Rogan says it, they think, oh, well, Joe Rogan's saying it, so it must be true. And it's pretty sad. All that marginalized people are asking for is to be treated with dignity, be treated with respect, and be given equal rights, not more rights than anyone else. Nobody is making this argument. So whatever woke mob he's referring to, again, we don't have the full context. I don't know what group in particular he was referring to. Perhaps he was reacting to an article or a particular protest. I don't know. But still, overall, for him to say that it's literally going to be the case that straight white men won't be allowed to talk in this country while he gets paid a hundred million dollars to talk. I mean, how can anyone take him seriously after this? The answer is they should not. And Joe Rogan is a f***ing clown. Not a beta man.